Hey, Sean here from SpeedTubeReview.com. I get people asking me, how do I solve a 2x2 two two blindfolded? And I usually just say, we'll solve a 3x3 three three corners, because all a 2x2 two two is is corners for 3x3, three three, plus then you're on your way to solving a 3x3 three three blindfolded. The other reason why I suggest people not to solve a 2x2 two two blindfolded is because performing algorithms like a Y perm on a 2x2, two two, in my opinion, is much more awkward than performing it on a 3x3, three three because you have those centers that are stable. Even after all this, I still get people who say, yeah, but I want to do a 2x2 two two anyways. So with all those people asking, let's go over how to solve a 2x2 two two blindfolded. What we're going to do is do a method that's old Pachman method, which is how almost every beginner learns 3x3 three three blindfolded. Another thing to note is that solving it old Pachman method doesn't reduce your ability to learn how to solve more advanced methods and doing commutators like in 3 style. So basically the way it works is you do a Y permutation, but without the F or F prime moves. So if you did F, it looks something like that, where you swap these two corners. But instead of doing that, we just avoid any F moves and ends up swapping this. So you don't do the F at the beginning or the F prime at the end. And so what it does is this piece moves to here and this one to here. And more specifically, this white sticker goes here and this orange sticker goes here. Now the way we solve blind is we just move piece by piece. We swap and swap and swap. We just keep swapping those two pieces. And what we do is we set up a piece to there, swap, move it back. Set up another piece, swap, move it back. So let's set up two pieces. And let's say we need to solve this. This blue sticker needs to go right here. And then this green sticker needs to go right here. And then that white one's going to go back there. So what I'm looking at is those two. This needs to go here. This needs to go here. And I label this with different letters. I have the letters listed in a website below. It's like what a lot of people use, although mine's slightly altered because that's what I decided I preferred instead. And so my letters, I have A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X. Now I'm going through that fast. I don't expect you to memorize the letters, what I just said just at that moment, but what I'm showing you is how to solve it. And then you can always go back, watch the video or click on the link but just something a little bit faster to help understand it. So this blue sticker needs to go to H and H needs to go to P. So what I do is I move the H sticker to right here because remember this sticker moves to there. So I move H to there, do that Y permutation without the F moves, and then I move it back. And what piece was there move to here, and the piece that was here moved to what we're going to call the bank or the buffer spot. That green then needs to go here, which was the letter P, so I set that sticker up, do the ALG, and move it back. Every single piece can be set up by, I believe, no more than three moves, usually it's two, sometimes one, like those were. And the line of letters is always, you just go to one and then follow where that goes. The main rule to think about is whatever color is your bank piece. So in this instance, it's white, green, red, although I often like to hold it with yellow on top. So I'll do it this way from here on out. Yellow, orange, blue is my bank piece. If I run into the bank piece, if I find it in my letter scheme or it's there to start, all I do is pick any other random piece and start a new cycle. So I'll show you what I mean by that. I'm just going to mix this up. Now what's nice with the two by two is you can start from any spot. There's no center, so you could look at see if anything is already in place and just sort of put that in front. But right here, I'm going to start and hold it this way. This is my bank piece. That green, orange, white, where does that need to go? So you have to know your color scheme with a 2x2, two two, which can actually make 2x2 two two blind harder than 3x3 three three corners, and I'll do 3x3 three three corners in the end. So, But I know that red's in front, orange is in back, Green is here, blue is here, yellow on top, white on bottom. So that orange needs to go right here because that's where the orange, green, white sticker is. So that's the letter P. This green needs to go right 
here where J is, because that, again, green, yellow, orange. So we have P, J. Then this red needs to go right here, so that's E. That red needs to go here, which is G, because that's where red, green, white is. So we have P, J, was it E, G? Yep, P, J, E, G. That's going to be O. And that's the bank piece. So have I missed any pieces? Yes, I have. I have missed this one, but that's already in spot. And I believe that's it. Nope, I also missed this one, which is in the right spot, but twisted. So we had P, J, E, G, O. What I'm going to do here, there's different ways you can just twist one corner, but I'm just going to say yellow needs to go here, which I'm going to add the letters I, C. So we have P goes to J, which goes to E, which goes to G, which goes to O. There's a bank piece, so I pick another random piece, and I have I, C. So I'm going to do set up P, that goes to there. And the setup move should be intuitive, although it might take some time and some extra thinking. This J needs to go there, so I can do an R2 to set that up. And then we have E. So this I need to do F prime D. And basically you can move any way you want as long as you don't disturb this one corner piece. And then we have to set up this right here. So we have to set up G right there. So I'm going to do D, R, and reverse those moves. And then I add O, and then move that up. So this one I can just do R prime algorithm, and then F algorithm. And there we go. Now, to me, that's more complicated than just doing corners. So I'm going to randomly scramble this cube and show you what that's like and why I think it might be actually easier to just do it this way. So with here, I know red in front, yellow on top, and it's just going to stay that way. And then, well, I've got that bank piece already there. So I'm just going to pick any random piece. I'm going to pick L because there's no setup moves. Super easy. So we've got L, J. Oh, I'm back at the piece I started on. So L, J, V. So I can pick any other piece. I'll do K. So we have L, J, V. And then we have K, X. And then, oh, that's going to go back here. This is a fun scramble. I'll just do these ones just so we don't go too crazy with letters. So we had the L, J, V, K, X, W. Since I landed back on the piece I started on with that cycle, I would pick another random one like this one or this one. But we'll just do these ones. So L, no setup moves. Much easier to execute. J, I do an R2. V, I need to move D prime, F prime. And then K, I can do an R move. X. W. And so I solved those. Now, if you can't memorize all the letters, you can do what I just did and do a few of them and then do a couple more. So for example, I'll pick any random piece because that's the bank piece. Also, you never worry about how the bank piece is oriented. So here we have, let's say, I, R, I. And that's in the right spot, but twisted. So I end the cycle because I landed back at it. Some very long corners. Might be one of the longest corners I've ever had to do as far as letter scheme. And then this, you can just think H, U. So I, R, I, H, U. So set up I, reverse the setup. R, reverse the setup. I, reverse the setup. And then it was H, reverse setup, U. Whoop, there we go. And corners are solved. So you can just do corners. That way you're learning how to solve it on a 3 by 3 It's easier because you have the colors there. You know, it'll help you recognize, I guess, practice knowing where the pieces are without using the centers. But both ways work. I would suggest this, but feel free to solve a 2 by 2 and then you can feel like you can solve an entire puzzle instead of having to memo edges afterwards. 
So thank you very much. I know that's kind of quick. I'm going to put my other blind solve video in the description as well as a link to the page that has all of the setup moves. Feel free to ask questions in the comment section below. Hit like, subscribe, more content like this in the future. And as always, stop by speedqbview.com for more news and reviews. Hey, Shawnee from speedqbview.com. I suggest people not solve a cube blindfolded two by two. That didn't make sense.